We can see then that anti-Semitic attitudes became widespread after World War I, particularly following the Balfour Declaration and the establishment of the Palestinian Mandate under Great Britain. The decades following the war created a fertile ground for the strengthening of imported anti-Semitic perceptions and for the reappearance of anti-Jewish Islamic traditions. The spread of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, as well as anti-Semitic Nazi propaganda, served to further this. During the immediate post-World War II era, anti-Semitic and vehement anti-Zionist rhetoric and actions were worsened by the Jewish-Arab struggle over the future of Palestine, as well as by the pressing problem of Jewish Holocaust survivors who sought refuge in Palestine. Things reached a boiling point with the UN Partition Plan of 1947, the subsequent war, the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, and the ensuing Arab-Israeli conflict. Though anti-Semitism was not the root cause of the conflict, it has been exacerbated by it, aggravating its representations and serving as an additional tool for the delegitimization and dehumanization of the other, Zionism and Israel. The founding of the State of Israel created a confluence of political and religious interests, the negative perceptions of the Jews found in the Quran were joined with European anti-Semitic ideas, creating a new form of anti-Semitism that flourished openly. This stood in contrast to the general turning away from anti-Semitism in the West after the Holocaust. The quantity and fury of anti-Semitic literature published in the Middle East increased, and during certain periods was printed partially under governmental auspices. The Six-Day War of 1967 and the swift Israeli victory over Arab armies furthered this process. The war dealt a shocking blow to the Arab world, and it generated unrest that continued to be channeled against Israel, Zionism, and the Jews. An important force in the formulation of anti-Semitism in the Arab and Islamic world was the transnational organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. As Professor Litvak mentioned in his previous lecture, it was members of this organization that initiated the pogrom against the Jews of Cairo in 1948. In order to better understand the importance of this organization, let's now go back to the late 1920s to learn about its foundations and about the crucial influence it had on the development of anti-Semitism in the Islamic and Arab world. The Muslim Brotherhood has been one of the most popular social movements in the modern Middle East. The Muslim Brotherhood was established in Egypt in 1928 by a teacher, Hassan al-Banna, who uh, tried to address the crisis of modern Islam. Uh, he regarded the, the crisis of modern Islam as twofold. One is that Islam has stagnated. Islam is unable to provide uh, answers to the, modern quest to the questions that modernity provides. This is one thing. Secondly, is that uh, Muslims have abandoned Islam they have adopted Western culture, and, and, uh, and there was a need to bring people back to Islam. Uh, uh, Hassan al-Banna's innovation was to uh, combine, uh, you can say, preaching with uh, social activity. The Muslim Brotherhood called for a return to the Quran and the Hadith as guidelines for a healthy modern Islamic society. Its goal was to rid Islam of Western influence, calling for a return to what it saw as the authentic religion. Initially, the leaders of the Brotherhood did not put much focus on the Jews. However, early on, a collaboration between them and the members of the Arab-Palestinian National Movement brought about a fierce anti-Zionist and anti-Semitic agenda. Zionists and Jews were quickly merged together, and the longing of Jews for a homeland in Palestine was perceived as a rebellion against the true historical hierarchy and the inferior place allotted to Jews under Islam. Let's further examine the place of anti-Semitism in the Muslim Brotherhood's philosophy and worldview. As part of their ideology, the Muslim Brothers uh, regarded the Zionism as uh, an manifestation of Western imperialist uh, cultural and political uh, imperialist attack on, on the Muslim uh, world. Uh, the Muslim brothers, un, uh, like many other uh, Muslims, did not make a distinction between Zionism and Judaism. For them, Zionism was simply the uh, practical uh, manifestation of uh, Judaism, and therefore, as an uh, outcome of their uh, vehement anti-Zionist uh, ideology, they, of course, developed uh, and elaborated a very strong anti-Jewish uh, ideology, 
adopting the Protocols of the Elders of Zion as an important text in explaining the uh, designs and the uh, Ill, evil intentions of uh, the Jews, uh, adopting other various, uh, again, European anti-Semitic uh, themes in order to explain the danger and threat of uh, Zionism uh, to, uh, toward Muslims. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, the Muslim Brothers uh, regard, uh, preach the elimination of uh, Zionism and the State of Israel. And since and with that, since the Jews, in a way, rebelled against Muslim world, Islam, since the Jews uh, do not, uh, by the very claim that they would not want a state, uh, by the very claim that they are a people, is, um, uh, say, a challenge to Islamic superiority, the Jews forfeited their right to live un as a protected minority under Muslim rule. And therefore, in, you can find in some Muslim Brotherhood texts, the idea is that eventually, at the end of time, the Jews will have to be exterminated because they rebelled against God and against Islam.